Hey guys, I'm Phil the Blanks. Welcome back to Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Um, Frank Saw just gave us some bogus testimony, and I have a problem with his testimony now. So asks the judge if I have any problems with his testimony now. So we will say yes. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. He gets so, like, proud of himself. Like, he's so confident. Like, I love it. Ah, contradiction. Even, like, two seconds ago, he was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never lawyered before. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment or knew the victim. Obviously went to the apartment. Um, I mean, it's possible that he might have known the victim. That's, like, not really important to this right now. So, went to the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. Jeez, Phoenix. Like, holy shit. Like, I mean, I know we know that that's what happened, but that is, that's a stretch, man. He's just, he might just be a, a person who's really bad at telling the truth or like, because he gets nervous or anxious, but holy crap. You struck her with the clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Murmur, 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 mumble, mumble. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Oh, Mishka, you brought up a slipper. Thank you. I'm going to throw that out now. Here you go. Just going to go get it and bring it back. Yes, Your Honor. As you can see from this flashback, he's clearly there. Mr. Sod, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so con uh, pfft. that's why you were so certain about the time. Wh what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. If you didn't see the flashback at the beginning of the game, you wouldn't even know this. Baseless. Just look at the witness's face. Mm. Ah. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That... That day, I... I never... Look, I... The, the clock, I... I heard... No! I mean, I saw... Saw... Uh, ah! Ow. <laughs> Poor Phoenix, you look so disgusting. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you! I saw him! He... He killed her, and he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Now he's got the hair back from the back point. I guess you, could, you might not be able to see the balding from the beh from behind. Order! Order in the court, I say! Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sod heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... And you can examine it. Uh, um, I guess try sound the clock. It makes sense. Ask the neighbors. You know what? Just for fun, I'm going to say that. All you have to do is talk to the victim's neighbors. Talk to the neighbors? I'm sure one of them heard the clock tell the time when the incident occurred. I see. Does the prosecution have anything to say, Mr. Payne? We, already, we have already made all the necessary inquiries. Everyone living near the victim's apartment was out at the time of the murder. Furthermore, even if a neighbor had heard the clock, that would not prove that Mr. Sod had heard anything. Hmm, that is true. I believe you may be wrong, Mr. Wright. You'll receive a penalty for that, unfortunately. One of your exclamation marks have disappeared. I I'm sorry, Your Honor. Let me think about it again. The whole case is blah, 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 blah. You can skip text if you've seen it before. That's when you know. Uh, so it's try sound the clock. I should hope, least, <laughs> unless I'm wrong. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. 
Ack! Ack, by the way. <laughs> Quite the good sound. As you can see, the clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sod heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sod, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha <sighs> ha! You forgot one thing. I don't know what voice I have now. Uh oh, what's he talking about? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! Exclamation mark. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright? It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Guilty! The end. See you guys next time for the... Imagine that's just the way it, how it ends. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the victim. Witness. I mean, whoops. <laughs> Unfortunately. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sart. I came all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Ugh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Aww, oh, so I guess we failed. Not so fast, Mr. Sart. <gasps> dun dun dun! Mia, I mean Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But Chief, it, it's over! I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the fact. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Yeah, that's a, that's a good piece of advice. Don't don't just, you know, who knows? Maybe you, it's good. Just, just assume it and just roll with it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have proof. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? I know! I know! Yes. Wait! Maybe I can prove it! You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it right. Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Rice, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words! Let's see you pull this one off! Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. I think this is the first one that, like, kind of shows how the logic in this game kind of works. It does make sense, kind of, um, and it's the passport. Because the passport proves that she came from Paris the day before the murder. The blunk. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, that, as, because we all know the time between, difference between a here and Paris is nine hours. We all know that. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow. It was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead, it, bleh, dead in the apartment was wrong. I'm reading too fast. I'm like going with the, uh, the speed of the actual text. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sod? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Oh! Sick burn. Sick burn. <laughs> it's just, oh, he's, oh no, oh god! Oh no, he's contracted rabies! Mishka, what did you do? Did you bite Frank Sod? Order! Order, I say! Get that dog out of my... I almost said cell. Out of my friggin... What is it? What is it friggin' called? Courtroom! Mishka, hi. She knew I was yelling about her. Hi, Mishka. Well. Mishka, I can't see the screen. You're in the way. This case... Mishka, get out of my way. This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client. He... Uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Rice? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. 
But I have a feeling I'll friggin' see this like 18 goddamn times in this series. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty! Look at these words in space. Confetti! Yay! They should be confetti in actual court cases. And with that, get the fuck out of my courtroom. Jeez, dude, it's not very, it's not called for at all. It turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, he saw Larry with a limp. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawat let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawat grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. I'm going to bring this up now because we're not going to see Sawat again. What's the dot in the middle of his forehead? Um, is it like an Indian thing? And I'm sorry if that sounds... Um, well, it sounds ignorant because I am being ignorant here because I, I don't know. Um, but like I know that like the dot in the middle of, like, a forehead. I, I usually see it on women, if it's an Indian thing. Um, I don't know why he has it. Because, I mean, he also didn't look Indian. Um, his skin tone didn't didn't strike me as Indian. Um, so I don't know. I, I wonder if that's something with the Japanese release that they explain a little bit better, or maybe it's part of his pun name or something. I actually don't know. Um, if anyone knows out there, I'd love to find out. Um, I'm, di like, genuinely curious about that. Oh, God, she's dead. Ketchup started pouring from her ears. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby number two. Phew, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. I owe, I owe it all to you. Sorry, I was distracted by, by your giant pubes. <laughs> like, jeez, they're right there. Also, like... You should probably do up your jacket. I don't know if that's like an undershirt or if it's like her bra, but it's not. You shouldn't be wearing that at court. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the chief looking this happy. She's this glad. Imagine how Larry must feel. I don't know if you can hear the dogs. They're kind of behind my computer. Uh, fighting a little bit, like not like just being playful. You know what I mean? Just being cute and running like, Clippy's looking at me now. Misha being a, a husky is pretty vocal. Not super barky, but she like does a lot of weird noises. Anyways. My life is over! Larry, come on, man. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. <laughs> Harry Butts. Man, I'm freaking mature. Innocent. <laughs> Um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh, no, I, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and, and one for me. Really? You? You made this. Well, thank you. I'll keep it I'll keep it as a memento. Now I'm very serious. <coughs> Look at my I know Mishka, he's so serious. Yo, Nick, can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And and she was just playing me for a fool. Okay, well I won't make that voice. Don't that make you wanna just cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you, in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right? Right. Don't you have something to show your friend? 
something that proves how she felt about him. At the end of every, um, I was gonna say mission, but at the end of every case, there's like a completely optional thing you can bring up. It just adds a little bit of flavor text. It kind of makes the, um, your client happy. You don't have to get this, but it's, it's a fun little thing. Huh? Oh yeah, right. And I mean, it's easy to screw it up too. What the heck is she talking about? And it is, um, the statue. Mishka, what is your problem? I don't know if you can hear them. Rawr, he's so angry. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when the bet. She took it with her when she traveled. Hmm, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick, I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. I hope that made him feel a little better. The end. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. This ends the tutorial. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, uh, people too. I thought it was going to be a list like people, things, blah. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. I don't know why it was dark when that happened. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. Oh, Phoenix! We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. <laughs> I, I love innocent butts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Ooh, studio audience is like, Wah! And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. That's a Phoenix doing Larry's voice. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. Eh, unless you count the clock he gave me. Uh, I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Foreshadowing the end. Or at least the end of this case. Yeah, brain episode has been added. Uh, we're going to cut the episode short here. I mean, it makes sense to end it. I'm not going to start the next uh, case on, on this current episode. It actually turned out pretty well in terms of timing. Um, it's a little bit of a shorter episode, but not by not by a long stretch. But anyways, um, I hope you guys like this. I do want to keep going. I'll probably go back to Darksiders for a few more episodes, and maybe I'll come back to this. But I, I want your honest feedback now that the first episode is done. Um, Phoenix Wright games kind of allow me to kind of do them in pieces. So, like, I might not do Turnabout Sisters for maybe another month or so. Or maybe I'll, I'll go into it right away and do Darksiders at the same time. Um, but because of the way it's, it's cases, I can kind of do them in, in separate occasions instead of doing the entire game in one go. Uh, so please, please let me know how you like this. If you think the voices are annoying, if you'd rather just me read it, um, or if you'd rather me not read it, or just not do this in, in, at all, or if you want to see me keep going, um, I'd love your feedback. So uh, anyways, guys, I'm filling the blanks, and I'll see you guys next time for whatever it is if I do this or Dark Saturdays, uh, but I'll see you guys next time, and uh, take care, guys.